Hey everyone, before we get started, I just want to ask you to hit that subscribe button. It means a lot to us and it really gives us motivation to keep making these great videos. So thank you. Hey everyone, so today I want to talk about rental scams. So, in 2019, the Better Business Bureau of Canada did a study and found that 43% of renters looking online encountered rental, fake rental ads. And that same year, for the first six months of the same year, Canadians actually lost $1.4 million to rental scam ads. So what are rental scams? So they come in two main types. The first one is where a scammer is trying to be a landlord or pretending to be a landlord. And the second one is where a scammer is pretending to be the tenant. So let's go with the more, let's start with the more common one first, the scammer pretending to be the landlord. So how does that work? So what happens is a scammer goes online, looks for ads that they like, and basically what they do is they clone that ad. They take the photos, they take all the details, and they, they change those contact details to their own and repost it online as their own ad. So when someone calls that ad, when a tenant calls that ad, they get redirected to the scammer. And then what they do is, they, what they, the whole point of this scam is to try to get the tenant to pay up front for, to do a viewing, to, do, to get the keys, whatever that may be, before they get a chance to sign the contract or even sometimes even see the property. This property isn't theirs, right? So, so they, they do whatever they can to make it so that the tenant doesn't see the property, may not even sign a lease, but to forward them the money up front and then they disappear. So what are some red flags that you might encounter when, in, when you see some of these fake rental ads? First of all, the price is typically too good to be true. All right, so if it's cheaper than you think, so what, a good way to check this is to go on Rent Faster, Rent Board, Zumper, Marketplace, and look at what house prices are going for in that area for the type of rental you're looking for. If the one that you see is significantly lower than everything else, there's a good chance it might be a fake ad. Secondly, they try not to meet you in person. The landlords try not to meet you in person. They can say that they're either out of country or they join the military, you know, the part of the military and they're deployed just to avoid uh, answering those questions. So they try not to meet you in person. So thirdly, they might ask you to send a security deposit before you ever get a chance to see the property or even sign the lease. So if they ever ask you to do that, that's a huge red flag, never do it. Fourth, the ads often contain bad punctuation or grammar. A lot of times these scammers are not from Canada. English may not be their first language. So typically there's a little bit of mistakes when they type out the ad. If you see that, could just be someone whose English isn't their first language and do live in Canada, you never know. But it's just something to look out for and you, you wanna look at the whole, the bigger picture as well, right? And lastly, they may not ask you any screening questions. So any landlord worth their salt should ask you at least a few screening questions. You know, why are you moving? Uh, do you have any dogs? Do you have any cats? Do you have any kids with you? How long do you plan to stay for? Why are you, you know, what do you do? Those simple questions are just to get to know you a little bit better. And they could very well be legit landlords that don't ask you any screening questions up front. Those might not be the type of landlords you want to work with anyway. But the point is, you want to look at all those factors, all those red, potential red flags, and then decide whether or not this person might be a scammer. A really, really, really big red flag is they start asking you for your deposit before you sign anything or see the property. Just never do it. Just walk away. Don't let them contact you again. So what can a landlord do to prevent someone from hijacking their ad and using it for evil? So. One thing you can do is uh, don't put the full address on the, on the ad. On Rent Faster, there's a little button when you're posting the ad that says hide address. So you can click yes on that. They'll hide the address. And then you only give the address to people who are actually interested in seeing the property, the full address. I mean, I think it'll give you the, uh, the approximate area where it'll be, but it doesn't give you the exact house address. So only give the exact house address to someone who actually wants to see the ad. The, how that prevents a scammer from stealing it is it doesn't have all that information. It makes it harder for the scammer to create a convincing ad if they don't have the address and they won't be able to give the address if someone asks. All right, so something to think about when you're creating your next ad. So I actually came across this type of scam uh, when my own Kijiji account got hacked a little while back. So they put on an ad of a house, beautiful house, beautiful pictures, but it was very cheap for what you were getting. And 
the, you know, the, the writing for the ad was terrible. I think I only had like five lines and just like, you know, give me your money now. Don't waste my time. It was very rude actually. But anyway, that ad got, it must've been 70 hits in the first, you know, in five hours that, that I was trying to you know, change my password and whatever. I ended up deleting my whole account because it was just, it was just became too much of an issue. But the whole point is they get a lot of people with these, with these fake ads. So, you know, tons of people inquire, inquiring and if they can even target 10% of these people, that's a lot of money they're scamming. So just to give you an idea of what the scale of these ads could be. So something to look out for, especially if you're a tenant, but also if you're a landlord, if you don't want your ad to be hijacked. Now let's go to the second type of rental scam where the tenant is trying to be a scammer, trying to scam the landlord. So how this typically works, and it's not that common anymore because it depends heavily on a post dated check and who writes checks anymore, right? So what happens is that the tenant gives the landlord a damage deposit check for more than the asked for amount. So what, what happens is then say the damage deposit is $1,200 and the tenant writes a check for $1,600. Gives it to the landlord, the landlord deposits it, and then the tenant calls, is like, tenant calls and says, hey, I'm so sorry, I accidentally wrote too much on the check, can you please e-transfer me back the $400? So this is where they get you. What they're hoping for is you will send them the money before that check bounces. Because once that check bounces, you know the money's fake. But until the check bounces, you don't know. So if you get caught and you email them that money beforehand, that's it. Like they're gone. I mean, it could very well be an honest mistake. They could really have just made a typo. In which case, call your bank to confirm that the money's actually in your account. And then give them a call back. It's like, hey, look, no worries. I'll just take that money and forward it toward, toward, put it towards your next month's rent. Never send them back the money. If you know that way, it just prevents, just protects you, and it's really doesn't really make a huge difference to them in the long run. So to sum things up, if you're a tenant looking for a potential rental, and you haven't seen the landlord, you haven't met the landlord, you haven't seen the property, you haven't signed the lease, do not send any money. Plain and simple. All right? And if, and on the other end, if you are the landlord and a tenant gives you too much money, don't send them back money. Just take that money, put it towards the next month's rent. And lastly, just follow your gut. If something feels off, it's likely your subconscious telling you that something's wrong with the whole situation and you should just pull the plug. So if you feel off with the whole situation, just stop what you're doing. There'll always be another property. There'll always be another tenant. Don't rush and find someone that works well with you that you feel good about because you're gonna be there for a few years. You're gonna be working together for a few years. You want this to be a good relationship, yeah? So I hope you like our video. For more videos like these, please check out our website at cwho.ca, where you also find tools and resources to help you on your investing career. See you next time.